Hello, good evening. Uh, I'm here again for our 12th interview in uh, this series, Time of the Feminine. And this evening, at almost 9 o'clock uh, p.m., uh, hour of Oslo, I have the pleasure to introduce you to Amara de Zossi. She's a very dear friend of mine. We met uh, almost four years ago in Oslo, and uh, she started the Red Sand community uh, in Oslo, more or less at the same time. I also started my activity in this um, field of, let's call it field of uh, organizing women's circles. And she, she has a spiritual name, she has a real name, she does many interesting things, but I don't want to spoil the surprise, so I would like to ask her to speak about herself in a few words, and then we start with our uh, interview. So thank you, Tamara, for coming today uh, to speak to us about you and what you're doing. And please tell us who you are and what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, so as already said, my name is Tamara De Zotti. I'm a trauma-informed uh, doula. If you like, uh, you can see it as a personal trainer or a coach for birth. And uh, I am uh, the founder of the Natural Power of Bird and the um, Red Sands community in Oslo. So as a doula, I have families which in their goal um, and to realize their ideal birth experience and I support them in an holistic, in, in holistic way. So uh, I give uh, to the mother a lot of attention. Uh, you can see it as an ally to her. So we uh, figure it out together um, what their desire or her fears are and we learn to know each other on a deep level um, and to work together in an environment uh, of mutual trust. Uh, I would like to say just a fun fact is that um, usually uh, we get so much connected that um, I really know when the baby is coming before the mother co is calling me. So <laughs> <laughs> that is very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I, I give them tools that help them to, to, to feel empowered. So, you know, all the knowledge about uh, the ph physiology of the birth, exercises uh, for relieving the pain during pregnancy or during birth. Um, um, positions, uh, nutrition, and so on, a lot of other things. So, and uh, in this way, they can really have uh, an easier birth experience. I, I help them to connect deeper with their body so they can make uh, the delivery of the baby easier, connect with the body, with the emotions, understand how important it is to be present in the moment, especially during birth and um, how to calm their fears, you know, it's, it's very, very important and discover their unique superpower. They can use it during birth, but also during motherhood. That's very important. <laughs> it's very, very important yeah. to know that you have superpowers because otherwise yes. you get very overwhelmed with the yeah. becoming a mother. Yeah, many, they say, we have a superpower. Hmm. <laughs> yes, all of us have one, at least one. <laughs> And um, let's say as a bonus, because not everyone likes to work uh, energetically, but I, um, I am a Reiki master and a moon mother, and I've studied also gentle bioenergetic. And uh, so for those who like that, I offer energy support, um, supporting the energy during the, the birth, for example, but also restoring the energy flow in the mother's uh, body um before or after birth both uh, the time and as a moon mother i really work in restoring the energy of the womb the womb that is our energy center that's another topic very very important uh but since uh, many people confuse um the figure of the doula with the one of the midwife or 
many times asked, they asked me, is that a new profession? So I would like uh, in this regard, uh, clarify for those who have some doubts. So just for start, uh, the, the word, the word of doula, doula word comes uh, um, from ancient Greek and means uh, woman servant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are the service, right? <laughs> so, uh, but doulas have been at w uh, women's side since as long as midwives. So traditionally, I'm talking like a bit of story, but it's just a um, couple of minutes. Traditionally, there was the midwife, an helper, and uh, the birthing woman, mm, the only people present during the birth. And doulas were these women helper. Uh, at the time, was they were women of age who knows everything. They they were old enough to know the work to be done, uh, and they were always present to give massage, to apply the, um, a cool um, washcloth, or help with the position, or fetch the tools for the meeting wife uh, or the herbs as well they give emotional support encouragement tips uh, all these kind of things and her role was and it is still now uh, to create a, a calm and safe environment for the woman who's giving birth so yeah just to say this because i think it's very important there are documents uh, coming from very very uh, ancient time. time before yes. even also also before the uh, christ you know yeah yeah, yeah. So it's very very interesting hmm. um yeah uh do you know <laughs> do you want to know more about me or if you want to okay? speak more i can give it two minutes yeah. more yeah. okay well uh this is about my work just uh, I want to say maybe a little bit, I can say maybe a little bit more about uh, myself as a person. So um, I come to do this work, uh, um, um, let's say, since when I was a, a child, my desire was to help people and animals. I'm very, I have a very strong connection with animals and nature in general. but. Uh, uh, at that time, my mother suggested uh, to become a nurse. As uh, I am a very sensitive person, the idea in, to go into the hospital was making me sick. You know, the lights, <laughs> the smell, the people, the sick people, you know, mm -hmm. was uh, all the pain. It was unbearable. I, I couldn't, I was feeling sick all the time. So I said, no, 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 no way. <laughs> I, I cannot do that. So I did something completely different. Uh, I first uh, became a, um, a primary school teacher. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. I don't know. Things. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I studied graphic designer because that was another my passion. The art, art in itself is a passion. And I worked uh, as a graphic designer for many, many years. Um, but you know, it was only after the the um, after, after my daughter, the second my second child was born, that I discovered the figure of the doula. And immediately, right away, I said, "Yes, that is." I never understood before because mm. I, I I didn't know that existed actually. So. Uh, now I know that uh, that is what I want to do and want to give um, and let know women. Uh, I want I want the women know that it's possible a beautiful experience, a bird experience. You know, mm -hmm. I had uh, the first one was not so so nice, but the second was amazing. So I had uh, these both experiences that I com can compare. And I know that it's possible to have a beautiful bird experience. Yeah. So this is what I yeah. want to do now. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, before I start with the questions, I just want to say that actually as a web designer also, you are very skilled and talented because you actually <laughs> helped me 
to create my own website <laughs> and I'm very pleased we, we actually did uh, lately an upgrade and in, in the way that the website is presented and also some of the content so yeah I can also recommend you not only as doula but also <laughs> web designer <laughs> if anyone wants uh, Thank to you. collaborate with you I'm really very pleased <laughs> of the results okay so Thank let's you. start with the first question then Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that uh, you might uh, wish to, to speak to us about why the work you are doing, dollar work with all the complementary uh, activities, the energy healing or Reiki or whatever uh, mm -hmm. you want to define them, uh, it's so important for women and maybe also for the days we are living today. Yeah, yeah, that is, is a very important thing. Uh, um, I will start to say this. Do you know that this is before the pandemic? One third of women has a traumatic birth experience, and one in eight mothers enter parenthood, parenthood with the PTSD. Yeah. And and thirty percent of men have postpartum depression. So, <laughs> if now, the men have depression. Now imagine the, the women. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> this is think, interesting. <laughs> yes. Now, try to think of uh, the present situation uh, as we are now in the world. No? Yeah. Uh, we live in isolation. Uh, women feel alone, feel alone during birth, pregnancy, after. Yeah. Be it was before as well, but now even more. Uh, my last client, uh, uh, she, she told me she couldn't. Go, uh, I'm speaking here for Norway. Um, she had to go to prenatal visits, meetings uh, alone without the partner. And uh, for the birth, she had to choose between me or the husband. Mm. And she, she mm. wanted a person that uh, was already, you know, uh, already used to help women during birth. So the doula can do something different from a partner, a different exactly. kind of support. Yeah. So, but um, going back just uh, <laughs> at the situation, uh, we know that this affects the health of woman and baby. And uh, I want to say research that is um, from to, uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, so this all before the pandemic, the virus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it says that uh, um, maternal loneliness showed association with dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction with life and the pair relationship and mm -hmm. with the presence of depressive symptoms. Yeah. The mother's prenatal loneliness predicted the child's internal, internalizing problems in adolescence. Yes. So intervention aimed to relieve in loneliness should be provided for mothers at all stages of motherhood. And this was yeah. before. Now, in the situation we are right now, we understand exactly. how much is important, how much important it is to address this problem. And all the work I'm doing is to, to say I want to prevent, you know, prevent all this pain. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, Doula work, <laughs> the doula's work. I mean, there are there is a research that um, uh, it, it just shown the effect, effectiveness of a doula in reducing the medicalization of delivery, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so much of that uh, you know the World Health Organization in 2017 uh, said the doula is so precious presence during childbirth that every woman should have one. On their side okay. yeah. and this is because of the continuous support during labor no? yeah. so uh, having someone on your side all the time that can support you in all this way uh, physically emotionally you know um, it can improve uh, um, uh, or increase the spontaneous uh, vaginal birth uh, you can have a shorter labor uh, decrease the rate of C-section or uh, the use of analgesia uh, and um, you can um, remember 
the the bird experience as a something nice <laughs> yeah so. i didn't have a dollar but mm -hmm. i think i would have really benefited in having one because i uh, i had to do a c-section my son was very big and uh, i was already quite old in age for for giving birth and there was some concern about what could happen but um, there was a situation in my life at this moment that was quite was quite heavy uh, psychologically that i suppose that having by my side someone like you would have been really uh really really of very big help and i didn't so a lot of the emotional stress that i underwent i had to carry by myself part of it was supporting by my mother that was with me also but yeah it was not easy so i perfectly understand how important it would be for mm -hmm. every woman to have someone like you uh, by her side mm -hmm. and it's interesting that you mentioned before and uh, during or uh, maybe after pandemic stages of, of the situation because i had a very strange polemic today uh, on facebook uh, about uh, wearing or not the mask and what are the consequences uh, in terms of generating traumas or reactivating traumas from the past or creating psychological dysfunctions in the children now and uh, for their future as adults and this now seems like hilarious if i have to compare with what you're saying about women because uh, we think that uh, pregnancy is just carrying the baby inside or eating healthy and uh, uh, getting good rest when we're tired and things like that actually it's not only that much more complex and it's a whole process where if we are not conscious and aware of all the factors that can influence not only the birth quality but also the health of the newborn and of the mother after it mm. you know yeah. there are so many factors that nowadays luckily there are some groups researching on it there are women like you doing this work but there are still, and in many parts of the world, so many women do not have access to this. No, that's and, true. And uh, the culture itself, in some situations, do not support as it should be, right? So I it's think, really an important topic. I think uh, doulas are not known very well yet. As well. No, but uh, yes, it's time that uh, they are known. That's why I also <laughs> invited you for, for this interview. Mm. And uh, let's continue now with the second question. Ah, okay, we, we, we have done with the first one, okay. Yes, do you want to speak more about it? I, I, I assume done, that, I can, uh, I can... oh, sorry, I assume that we, we are done, that's why. But if you have to speak more, yes, you can have some. Yeah, I can add something, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so uh, the fact that, um, is that uh, I also work holistically, right? Mm -hmm. and. I think is um, I, I like to mention this because uh, um, we are we need to consider and take care of the the old person as it is just the old person not the patient not the diagnosis you know so we the, the holistic care involves everything the mind the body the soul of our clients if we want to call them like this and i like uh, as i mentioned before i like to work as a main mother because we focus on the womb that is our womb center no? our energy center and um, yeah, if you want i can tell you also why i think it's important to work on that aspect um because it's as you said before you know um our womb is not only the home for our child uh, to be born you know for nine months is something more uh, and there's something that is very important also energetically uh, since we believe in this uh, masculine center world and we we live a life of fixing things this is not the, the feminine way of life and um, um, so we have uh, the womb, the heart, and the mind that are very much connected. So when we are working only on the physical, we are not living our 
full being. You know, we are living in a life uh, based on fear. And uh, when it's like that, uh, we create traumas because we just trigger our pr primitive uh, fight and flight brain response. And um, we are going to affect uh, our daily life, you know, in many ways we do um, anxiety, stress, uh, this way. So, um, so I, I, I'm not saying that science is not important. Science and medicine are important to solve problems, but only on a physical level. And now we need to reconnect. So we, we need, um, um, in some way, all of us uh, as women, we experience, experience this connection because we, are, um, we have not been able or free to live in a society that uh, nurtures our authentic femininity, no? So the work I'm doing, the boom healing, the boom blessing as a moon mother is important because it offers us a new path and um, offer us healing, a new way of feeling good in our body, in ourself, and connect with our all being. So, um, since the Bumbi is our uh, center of power, strength, empowerment for women, is but it's also a portal uh, to connect uh, with uh, Mother Earth. And, and that connection would fill us with vitality in our body, sensuality, self-confidence. Um, and when we connect the womb with our heart, we also uh, opening up uh, in healing with, with love, you know? So mm -hmm. <laughs> everything is related, uh, all, also all our relationship, uh, um, the relationship with that we have with our body, not only with other people, but with our body, physical body, boom cycle, thinking mind, everything is influenced by our boom. <laughs> so it, it is a very important thing. And uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yes, I, I was smiling when you said with the heart too, because we co created a workshop yeah. that we already yeah. hold twice. And actually, it was at the beginning of the pandemic in March that we had to improvise the workshop and put it online. <laughs> mm. And it's called From Heart to Hara, that meaning yeah. from whom, from the womb, Hara being an old name for a womb, to, to the heart, like a sacred journey where we can dig and discover more things about ourselves and uh, open this channel. Mm. But yeah, maybe next year we can do it again if we will have opportunity. Now, this, the second um, question, as you were speaking about uh, being a moon mother and why this is important as a work that actually complements your work as a doula. And I personally experienced receiving both womb healing and womb blessing because I'm mm. trying as much as I can to do all those four times or five times a year worldwide, worldwide one blessing that Miranda Grace organizes. And you are practically part, uh, part of uh, this movement because you are trained by her. Yeah. And I can actually testify the effect of these uh, experiences on myself, which was were always positive and gave me so much, not only in energetic terms, but also physiologically. I saw changes in my menstrual cycle, in my emotional uh, experience of certain things and so on. And I know that you also spoke many times about real uh, interesting benefits also for other women, like for fertility, for uh, bringing more awareness about who we are as women, about our energy and so on. Mm -hmm. So the second uh, question is about energy that you create when you are a moon mother and about how you experience this energy because you are the one who actually becomes a kind of channel between the divine and the women that you are giving the, the, the healing or the blessing and what is the difference between healing and blessing the healing and, and, and the blessing, blessing. yes yeah 
because most of the women might not know if they didn't never receive or maybe the, if they are interested to know it's good they know and they can experience at a certain point um so i'm starting from the, uh, the second part <laughs> <laughs> uh, the difference between uh, the boom blessing and the boom healing uh, essentially is that uh, the womb blessing energy is an energy that is awakening the feminine energies in your body and uh, it's not that it's happening like that you know um, every womb blessing is kind of opening a little a layer and layer more and more so it builds up uh, uh, on each other mm -hmm. and uh, you are awakening more and more with the time so through the awakening, to you, <laughs> you can, uh, uh, you are integrating the energy of the divine feminine, and little by little, you are going to um, hold much more energy with the time. No. Uh, the difference with the healing is that uh, once you open your energy to the divine feminine, uh, we can heal the energies so uh, the, the um, womb healing we work on the center of the womb so the womb center i mean and uh, uh, we we i mean we as moon mothers <laughs> uh, we are going to um, feel where our blocks and clear uh, clear them and create a, a flow of energy in all the archetypes of the of the womb that are the main archetypes uh, or the feminine archetypes you know um then there is also a version a little bit more uh, extended that is uh, the soul um, healing for the woman mm -hmm. and then in that case we work on the three cent main centers so the womb the heart and the, the the, the star the, is called uh, yeah the third eye. yeah yeah but uh, it works the same in the same way um when uh, you be in I, i've been uh, initiated by miranda gray to become a moon mother uh, in that moment i opened she opened my channel <laughs> my channel to receive the energy of the divine feminine and uh, it's a strong energy to to hold and that is the reason why she she made a different level so now i am uh, on the second level uh, that means that that i can hold a little bit more energy from the first level and um, a little bit more energy than the one you can hold uh, that since you are not being initiated for example but open it to with the boom blessing you know i don't know also it's clear <laughs> yeah but how do you experience inside yourself this energy when it happens yeah. and when you give so, the blessing or the healing yeah uh, uh, there is our practice as a moon mother we practice practice it constantly let's say in cleaning our channel taking it open and clear in a way that we, you can receive but also uh, we ground ourselves with mother earth and uh, it's also on the uh, boom blessing meditation uh, mm -hmm. there is the tree so this is my um, how i feel i feel really connected i feel like a tree with the roots that grow in deeper 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 into the earth and feel so much uh, supported and um, you know uh, protected and uh, um, able to reach up to all the energy that i need to take on me so i'm connected with the moon Mm -hmm. And I bring the energy of the moon inside of me from uh, my crown and down to my hands. <laughs> uh, there is a beautiful image uh, or description uh, that Miranda uh, did. Uh, uh, I don't know. It, can I can I find it up? 
Yes. Yeah. Um, just if you can give me just a moment. Yeah, I really love this uh, image she she gave uh, uh, of the moon mother. And uh, see. Yeah, so you can also close your eyes, so just uh, try to imagine, visualize what I'm saying. It's so beautiful. So imagine a woman standing in front of you. And she is bathed in moonlight. She's radiant in the silver light white, silver white light. <laughs> and on her palms rest the two full moon. At her brow is a white star. At her heart lies a silver chalice, surrounded by pale pink light. And at her womb, eleven lies a golden cauldron glowing with light and filled with the ocean of the world. Beautiful. beautiful. This is beautiful. And uh, also just reading that, I'm just feeling energy of love. So I, after the, the connection, you know, with the moon, with the earth, with all the elements, and I feel myself surrounded with the love of Mother Earth and feel my heart with love. Yes. <laughs> and this beautiful white light. <laughs> also, my, my hair started to become like... Um, um, Shiny. Silver, silver, silver light uh, thread. Yeah. Thread, feel, yeah. Yeah, they're feeling kind of connecting me with the ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I remember that many times you also, if the women participating in the receiving the blessing want, you also uh, can tell us uh, messages about how you visualize because you are very intuitive and you receive sometimes messages about each of the wombs that you give blessings to in form of an image. And they are always very, very interesting. So this is also kind of how to say you are going beyond the physical space where you give this womb blessing and you receive more information about yes. the wombs. Yes, when uh, I'm supported by the divine and uh, they just show me uh, what I need to see. Yeah. Yeah. And this is interesting. I, as I said, I did it several times and every time I get something very important and beautiful. Mm. So let's go to the third question. We still have uh, so three questions left for our interview. And um, I, um, I'm thinking of asking you something about the Red Tent community, mm -hmm. because this is something that somehow I, I had a small intervention at the beginning when you started, because I motivated you a little bit to start. <laughs> And we both got some motivation, extra motivation to start at the same point with these uh, activities for women and with women. And um, um, I somehow feel that uh, this uh, Red Tent community for you is an important dream, but I know that you also have many challenges. <laughs> and I would like that you speak a little bit about both. The challenges and the and what this means for you and what is why do you think it's also important for women in general you know when i started uh, well yes you encouraged me <laughs> also <laughs> because I w the first thing was well i don't know if it has anything to do with my work as a doula but it, it does actually so it really does because it's true that uh, as a dual I work uh, from pregnancy and over <laughs> because yeah uh, pregnancy birth and postpartum usually this is the three 
um, main th this is the main time period uh, uh, the woman's life uh, but uh, working with the ret in the red tent with women that means that I'm also working with them before and after and um, is it's an experience for me. For me, uh, for me, is a, uh, a way to grow. Is a way to not only stay in contact with other women, but to grow together. Uh, I'm not feeling myself like, uh, um, you know, a, a leader. Of course, in a way, I may be a leader because I'm leading this group of the, the retent, but uh, I feel like uh, I'm uh, on the same, le same level as others, you know, and um, there, there are things that uh, I know and other things they know. So we can experience and together and share together, grow together. And this is beautiful. This is uh, really create a community, create uh, uh, something. Uh, once uh, many th uh, many years ago with the villages we had women had the opportunity to share and to have time for themselves too you know but now we feel alone as we i, I said before we feel more alone than you know than ever yeah than ever and uh, if we don't create a community in some way we get lost <laughs> And what are the challenges you have with creating this community? Well, the challenges, <laughs> you know, of course, uh, I am uh, Italian, living in Norway, speaking in English, so maybe the language is a little bit of a challenge, but <laughs> I, I'm not, uh, I don't feel it very much. Uh, I think that uh, uh, one thing is that uh, women are very um, uh, i need to find the right word um, is, uh, um, you can say it in italian maybe if or if it's not coming I'm, in english i'm not sure they they like to challenge each other in a way you know ah, they are competitive yes competitive, nice. right competitive. thank you yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah they are competitive so not always there is this kind of uh, uh, support that i like to have in this kind of community you know mm. um but uh, after now three years um I think it's better. I think I can see just a little bit of improvement. That, that is okay. Just a little by little. And I also growing. So the, the, the kind of red tent that um, uh, people see, the women see now is different from three years ago, two years ago, you know? I remember. <laughs> I've been yeah. to many sessions of the Red Tent and I also tried to support sometimes if I could. And yes, there was a, an evolution, there were some ups and downs, and now we have the extra challenge of uh, getting online instead of gathering in presence. Yeah. It's sometimes yes. it's tricky yeah. because yes, we have uh, the support of technology, but um, it's not the same as sharing a physical space. That's true. Energetically, yeah. should be the same, but uh, missing the contact. So. <laughs> yeah, there is always a kind of barrier that is uh, this screen that separates us somehow. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I identify with this challenge also for the circles I was mm -hmm. used to do because now I, in summertime, I could go outside a few times, but uh, now that we are supposed to go in and there is lockdown again. <laughs> Well, in so a, in a way, you probably online. <laughs> you know, in a way, doing it online, you don't have the challenge to find a place because yes, this is also one. One other thing is uh, exactly this: to have a place the that yeah. red tent should be free, should yeah. be free for everyone because is um, 
very important thing for the whole community. Exactly. But people, it's difficult to find a free place. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's why we should encourage more women to, to come and propose. Maybe sometimes we find alternatives in the home of each other. Yeah, in the home of each say. other would be nice. I don't yeah. have space. So that is yeah. my problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I know this part too. Yeah. But uh, hopefully we will not have this situation for very long. Who knows? Who Maybe knows? next year things will change again. For the positive I, I, I think uh, we need to rediscover a new way of live uh, with uh, also with the virus <laughs> yes yeah yeah it's it will be a presence for a month for a while so we need to get accustomed and get the best of the situation even with the restrictions and everything it implies hmm. You mentioned at the beginning when you were presenting yourself something about a spiritual name. And uh, oh. I remember when you spoke about it uh, online because it was right after a circle that uh, uh, I organized for an interesting project I'm developing now with several women among you, which also you, because you got that day a mask and I insisted that you should be the divine feminine archetype for this oracle we co-create. And you were very happy because you finally saw yourself, even if it was a mask on your face with some colors, you could uh, somehow mirror in that mask uh, also this name that you were speaking, it's your spiritual name and identify more with it. Could you speak a little yeah. bit about this? Well, um, it started as a, a fun game at the beginning, even though I... I had some time this feeling that my name Tamara. I don't know. I just, uh, like it just feels that uh, it doesn't belong to me. <laughs> so well, I did this uh, this thing just for fun and asked uh, for a spiritual name, mm -hmm. and the name is uh, Shakti Nam, Shakti Nam Kau. So. Um, at the beginning, I said, "Oh my God, I can't, I can't uh, <laughs> use a name like this. It's too powerful. Who I am to to use a name like this? You know, <laughs> uh, I'm nobody. But uh, of course, this is um, um, also a challenge, um, uh, a new new way of seeing." my life as woman as well because shakti nama is actually uh, the embodiment of the divine feminine on earth <laughs> and merged be merged with, uh, with the, the the name of god so it is so powerful <laughs> so so powerful uh, and actually i really working with embodiment now very very much uh, with the presence uh, and uh, I actually discovering uh, how Shakti is really part of who I am. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the feminine that is in all of us. We are all Shakti, if, <laughs> if I can say that. We are all feminine, we are all creating. And Shakti is the everything that is alive on this world that is the smell of the air or you know the 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 the, the warm sun that you're feeling in your skin and you know you embody all of this and that is uh, embodying the divine feminine the sens sensuality of being a woman as well yeah but what exactly in that mask made you feel that actually this name suits you and you are that name so i don't know maybe the red color <laughs> because it's kind of the color the color of passion of sensuality of love uh, all together mm. maybe yeah. interesting yeah, yeah. okay so now we are at our last question Mm -hmm. And it might be a more complex question with uh, several answers, maybe, if you want. Okay. But 
you speak a lot about divine feminine, mm. but we know that the feminine without masculine is not a whole. And no. we are as women, we are also masculine because we came from a mother and a father. So we bring both energies inside our life when we uh, take form or shape as a human being, as a woman. So I would like to, to know how do you relate with also the divine masculine and what their union, the mas sacred union or whatever you want to call it between masculine and feminine is it also um, part of your life or part of your work. Yeah, that is right. And this is also important because as a moon mother works so much with the divine feminine uh, and actually um, Miranda Gray, uh, she, she says something that I, I, I'm not totally agree with. And that is the fact that uh, as women, we are just feminine and the, the men are masculine. I actually don't believe that because because of my experience, I experienced the uh, the union of the masculine and the feminine on myself. I know what does what that feels. So I, I don't believe what she said. <laughs> but um, I think that, as you said, the feminine doesn't exist without the masculine we need to create a balance between the two. And, um, and actually, um, is, uh, you know, as a Shakti, uh, Shiva is the masculine part, you know? Mm -hmm. And where Shakti is everything the, that we can see, we can smell, we can hear, the, the Shiva is uh, the nothingness where all the possibility exists all together. Mm -hmm. Have you ever looked in the eyes of someone and see that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it, that it would be something very interesting, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, Depends on which eye you are looking. Maybe you can see one thing in the left and one in the right. Now I'm joking, but... <laughs> yeah, but that is also possible. I mean, uh, Men and women, um, yeah, there are uh, something that we have inside, and without the masculine, we we can um, um, we can how to explain? Um, we can't be a woman without the masculine, um, because <laughs> I don't know, it is. It, I, I know uh, energetically, physically, I experience it, but it's so difficult to explain. But um, if you want, we I can uh, we can do some some nice game <laughs> and yeah. understand how does it work. This uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm always talk, for a nice game. <laughs> yeah, we talk about uh, his so popular topic, the uh, the soulmate, find a soulmate, the twin flame, and you know. I'm still uh, on but, the journey to find mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Give me a tip. <laughs> the, the point is that everything inside of us, if we think uh, the idea of Platone that we are. Uh, half uh, uh, apple, and we need to find the other one. No, yeah. uh, you imply at the same time that you are broken. Yes. Are you? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> we are. We are perfect as we are, but we are not broken. We just need to find out with, within ourselves the other half uh, that we don't see. Yes. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> said that, I don't believe that we need to, to look uh, out for the perfect um, man or for the soulmate or the twin flame. So, uh, if you want, I can explain this and you can, um, 
you can also close your eyes if you want or keep it open and just imagine what I'm describing. Mm -hmm. So let's say that uh, uh, you as a person, um, you are a castle, a castle, 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 yeah, yeah, and uh, um, and you are in a village or other castle, castle like uh, like yours with the same planimetry. Mm -hmm. They may have uh, different things, uh, different some small different things uh, one each other. Uh, some can be. Um, looks like older from the outside, <coughs> sorry, but the planimetry is all the same. They may appear from the outside um, different because uh, uh, maybe are from other uh, era or, you know, from the 18, you know, how you say, uh, um, yeah, for a different age, <laughs> a different time. Uh, but the planimetry is always the same, right? And uh, that village is the village of your um, soul family, we can say, or your um, soul mates, because that can be more than one. And then close by, there is another village with castle, castle different from yours. They are completely different. <laughs> they are, um, they also have a different planimetry, but when you put uh, them together, they looks nice between um, uh, one, one, you know, when you see it uh, on, on the, uh, <coughs> uh, I don't know, they, they are a good match. Let's say that. Mm. So it's like to say that you, in your village, you are producing, um, the juice <laughs> or the lemon and in the other village they are producing the juice from your lemon so it's a good match it's completely different but it's <laughs> a good match those are uh, complementary souls right are those souls that um, you as uh, can understand are a really good match you can actually grow a lot with them you know because they are those souls that uh, um, give you the other part that you you miss to complete your work mm -hmm. um, when you are inside with a soul from your soul family you feel good you have a good energy and everything but mm -hmm. you are not growing because everything that you uh, uh, learn from um, I don't know you're studying something you everything you le you're learning uh, during the dream they come to know what you are learning so they know also <laughs> as well you know the <laughs> same thing so they you are uh, so connected with the soulmate that you're going together in a way or in another way but uh, if you looking to live with a soulmate that would be a disaster i mean could be nice to have them to recharge your battery but um, on a soul level you are learning much faster with the soul companion um, a complementary uh, soul mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yes there is also the soul companion that, that one is uh, something different and it's completely different from the other two villages. The castles are completely, completely different mm -hmm. and represent uh, souls that are, you know, they have an ancient pact with you uh, or you say pact? Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah mm. kind of agreement, yeah. Yeah, kind of agreement, yeah. They decided to come in this world to help you to learn something and usually are those souls that are very uh, cruel with you so <laughs> you know oh, so yeah. they're challenging you the the companions are challenging you yes so, so yes they're okay so companion Interesting. And, uh, <laughs> yeah but th that makes you understand that uh, um, actually they are loving you so much that uh, they choose to come in this life to teach you this lesson 
even though if they have to be cool with you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, okay. yeah. So I have to desire to meet actually the twin flame and not the soulmate because with the soulmate, I'm not growing. No, but the twin But flame, I know I have soul sisters and with them I can do something together, right? Yeah, but <laughs> this, the twin flame is one different thing uh, uh, because let's go back to your castle. So mm. uh, to all, um, own all your castle, castle, you have to know all the rooms, all the places. There are some that are closed, some are Murati, uh, uh, like, like the secret stone. or hidden yeah, secret uh, chambers, yes, yeah, or hidden from the side because, uh, on a conscious level, you are closing those areas of your life <laughs> of your <laughs> castle, and you need to rediscover them and open everything and clean it and reorganize all the room from the. Um, from the ceilings ah, from the upper the oh there is a word but i don't yeah. get it now yeah the upper part of a building or yes. the upper floor or the, yeah. or the, the, the attics the floor. attics yeah attics. yeah and, and the basement as well basement so yeah. you have to clean and open everything and so when you see uh, your castle full um of light all the rooms uh, illuminated by the light that means that uh, you are one with with your feminine and masculine and you find your twin flame because <laughs> your twin flame is the union from your masculine and, and feminine part so it's myself that. practically it's, yourself. it's in myself <laughs> but it's your whole self yeah <laughs> I see in this way. <laughs> Very interesting uh, topic. This one we should explore more because from from what I uh, read about twin flames, they say that uh, sometimes you need a whole life or even more lives to meet again, and it's not always easy to somehow get together because you are mirroring each other so well in so much detail that in many cases, let's say that if both of us, uh, me and the twin flame, have still wounds or unresolved issues. We will mirror them and it will be like we cannot get together until we don't heal them. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? So sometimes it has to be a both sides process. So it makes sense that actually the twin flame first is achieved inside and then you yeah. can find it in the real world because uh, it's how it works. You, you cannot expect that the world gives you something better than the the version you are in that moment if you feel that you are complete and whole then you can find that version of you outside mm. and this is very interesting <laughs> yeah thank you tamara we already mm -hmm. finished our five questions but before we finish the interview i still want to give you a gift oh <laughs> and why you are speaking then about this um, images uh, with the twin flame and soulmates and on i was shuffling from two decks mm. because i felt that i want to offer you two cards and um, maybe it's something that will speak to you or maybe it's something that uh, the message will come later to you i don't know but the first one will be angels gods and goddesses Oh, beautiful. And this one I already shuffled and cut. So I will take the first card that comes. That is God of Reflections. <laughs> we spoke about uh, <laughs> Twin Flames, really? <laughs> the qualities you see in others are simply your own reflections. <laughs> Isn't it nice? <laughs> Let's see what the card says. Because it's a, a woman reflecting herself in water. You can ah, see it. Yes. Mm. So this is the God of Reflections. Let's see where it is. There are many gods here. God of Reflections is 41. 
and says, well, you are giving away your power because you fail to recognize and acknowledge the many wondrous qualities that you possess. The qualities you admire in others are simply reflections of the same qualities within you. You often, yet often, you falsely believe that others are better than you in some way. It is now time to let go of this belief and allow your beauty, talent, and creativity to shine through. From now on, every time you see beauty in others, let it serve to remind you of your own beauty. If you recognize success in others, check to see how success also exists within you, and so on. As your perceptions are brought into balance, you become a more effective force in the world and have more impact on those around you. By acknowledging all the beautiful qualities that you already possess, you open the door to an endless stream of abundance and blessings which stem from the heart of creation. I think I, it's a very beautiful message. Yeah, I think, you know, it's um, the, the idea, the concept of mm, not being good enough is something that I have, but... <laughs> so many other women have the same problem yeah it's a common <laughs> the, complex mm, and working on <laughs> yeah it's a common complex because we have been educated to feel that uh, we will never be good enough if we don't do that or if we are not that and when we discover a different way of being and doing then people will look to it as well are you crazy why are you doing this and blah, 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 blah. So it's time, time of the feminine means it's time to stop this blah, blah, blah and hear to ourselves and believe in ourselves. Mm. It's the only way that we can be ourselves. Mm. And then as you are a moon mother and I have a very beautiful oracle that you also have, I suppose, Mother Mary. No, no, I don't you have You don't that. have it? No? No, but I know. Because I, I know, know you also have a lot of oracles about divine feminine and archetypes and things like that oh our lady of growth assured mm. so this is the image of our lady of our divine mother having wait it has a child in front of her yeah i can see that yeah and a flower at the bottom oh yeah mm -hmm. and the doves at the there? and also five roses around her head and is number 30. So let's see what the book says for the Our Lady of Growth Ashore. There is a beautiful manifestation which you have long desired coming to fruition now. It is important to the well being of your own soul and the healing of our world that you have patience and allow this birth to happen at the best timing. If it happens too soon or too late, there will be unnecessary complications. I will take care of the timing and as you trust me, you will find the birth of your dream happens naturally and with great joy. So she is now your doula, oh our lady of growth assured. Yeah. There is something that you are considering embarking upon, either a new project, or taking a chance on a new interest or social connection, or even a new philosophy. Perhaps it is a letting go that will lead to a new start. The Oracle of Our Lady of Growth Assured comes to tell you that your success is already determined in heaven. What needs to be now is your continued effort and prayer, surrender and patience on the physical plane, and most importantly, your positive expectation without any attachment as to how it will happen, that your situation is working out and will manifest perfectly. If we want to manifest something truly special in our lives, something that perhaps is a little out of the ordinary or contrary to what most people think is possible, then the blessing of Our Lady of Growth Assured is very helpful. To manifest, we start with the inspiration or impulse from our heavenly divine self that translates into inspired ideas, then thoughts, and perhaps plans. As we add our heart and passionate energy into the mix, we generate the fire we need to eventually act on opportunities in the physical world, 
so that our manifestation can be complete and successful. The more extraordinary our desired manifestation, the more it is likely to challenge mass beliefs or tip our world upside down, even in the most wonderful way. And the more likely it is that there will be delays or difficulties with our manifestation. That is because we will bumping up against some powerful opposing forces. The negative expectations of the world can cause even the brightest spirit to slump from time to time, losing energy and forgetting to trust in the unconditional love and incredible power of the Divine Mother. So when this happens, our manifestation process might get a little bumpy, hitting some snags here and there. If we come back to our center, Using the healing process for this oracle, we speed up the process again, getting back on track. Our Lady of Growth Assured comes to tell us not to give up. She tells us to have patience and work on feeling open-hearted and open-minded about our manifestations and how they can come into being. We work on feeling the energy of what we want to create. So if it is abundance, for example, we work on cultivating the feeling of abundance as best we can, all the while remaining open to the manifestation of our intentions without attachment as to how, when, or what it will look like. She tells us not to turn away in fear of failure, especially as when this oracle comes to us, our manifestation is actually not far away at all. There is an expression that it is always darkest before the dawn. This is true with the manifestation process. Often when all seems most hopeless and signs of future life of our desires are apparently non-existent, it is the moment before the birth. We must keep our faith and not require that we see all in advance or even that we have proof along the way that something is happening. It can be hard to trust in such circumstances, but if it helps bring your dreams to life, then it is worth the effort. The Oracle of Our Lady of Growth Assured brings you help in trusting in your process now and the message that your desires are coming to life. Trust and know in your heart that your growth is assured and that your dreams are manifesting at the perfect time and in the perfect way. And here you have a healing process and affirmation. Close your eyes and imagine or perceive a garden that is thriving with life. There are new shoots and mature plants. The garden is well balanced and healthy. You notice a woman in lovely robes seated on the ground next to a garden bed with a child who is enjoying playing in the soil. At the child's hands, there is a fresh green baby shoot sticking up in the soil. The child looks at it and begins to tug it to tug at it, trying to make it grow faster. The woman laughs and gently touches the child's hand. The child stops tugging and waits. Together, they watch the shoot as it grows. It matures in its own time with the loving care of the lady and the attention of the child. Notice if the plant stays young or grows into a mature plant. Notice if it has leaves or flowers or fruit. Just be with what happens in your creative visualization. When you are ready, say the following affirmation aloud to complete your process and repeat it three times. My spiritual growth and heart's desire manifest in the perfect time and the perfect way, assured of success by the Divine Mother's grace. And this was the healing process and affirmation for this beautiful card number 30. I hope you enjoyed yes, the visualization. Thank you. And the message too. Mm. And I thank you again for coming today to give us your precious not only presence and energy but your precious wisdom and experience around the women world and I wish you good luck in all your projects in the future and I hope to see you soon again. Okay? Yes. In the near Thank future. You. So Thank you very much. 
and I will post the interviews as soon as possible once I um, have it available on our groups and YouTube. So, can I just add something? Yes. Um, if someone wants uh, to contact me, yes, exactly. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, my website is uh, naturalpoweropberta.com and um, you can scroll down the, also the, from the first page and the first button is uh, connect with me and you can get, uh, uh, for example, a free consultation or a free meeting uh, is 30 minutes. Uh, but if you want to connect with me and talk about something, you want to know something more, I'm truly available. I, I like to have chat and know other people. <laughs> you can also go on Facebook and find her as Tamara De Zotti. Very That's simple right. and direct. Sure. Yes. <laughs> thank you again. And thank you. thank you all for watching this interview. Soon will be available for all. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice bye. -bye.